Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to another Mac84 live stream. My name is Steve. This is Mac84. We're doing a live stream, fixing more Macs today. How are you, everyone? So let's make sure the audio is working correctly, as we always have to do with live streams, because that's just the nature of the beast. Sometimes things just don't want to work. We're going to position the camera a little bit differently. There we go. Uh, tripod's a bit weird today, but we'll try and make it work. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing burned down yet. <laughs> so, all right, sounds good. Can't, yeah, all right, turn up your hearing aid, Greg. All right, so, um, yeah, so I have been cleaning up, as you saw some of my previous streams. We're not going to be doing that today because I did a whole bunch of cleaning um, before. Before. So, yeah, no, no more of that. Um, so... Yeah, thanks, GT. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right, so I got, got the audio all, all figured out. Um, but, yeah, let me show you what I've been doing. I'm just holding the camera up. I'm not even taking a trip or anything. Um, so you notice that a lot of that stuff has moved, and the floor is no longer visible because you can't see it really, but that sink is gone. So that sink, that whole uh, piece of wood that supported it, and all that crap that was on it and under it had to be moved. So that's why everything has been moved away from the wall. And um, what had happened was I, I took apart that sink. That sink is now uh, elsewhere. And all the wood from there has been taken away. So the idea is, and you could already see when I panned over there, uh, the metal shelves that are in pieces over there, those will be set up. And then the computers and everything will go on those shelves. So everything will have its place. Uh, and that'll be nice. But... In this transitional period, there's a lot of crap on the floor. The EMAC is back on the floor. It's right side up this time, uh, and it's just a little difficult to walk. But temporary. We're gonna we're gonna get past it. And yes, the hammer died. If anybody you saw on Twitter or Instagram, my hammer broke. That went right in the trash. No need to keep broken tools. Um, so yeah, thankfully I, I found the other hammer and uh, you know, got to work. But that was a fun adventure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't screwing around. <laughs> that that hatchet helped, so yeah, good old hatchet. Oh boy, yeah, no, not, I'll I'll take the compliment of super strength, but that's quite far from the truth. <laughs> so let's say hello to everybody in the chat. We have thirty people already, and this insanity has just begun. We're ready to go for another eight hours, huh? All right, so let's uh, let's see who's in the chat here today. Let me blow this up because my eyes are old, and. Uh, Yes, we're on to medieval weapons. So we have Josh, we have Jay, we have Hunter. Hunter, I might actually be working on something of yours today. Uh, Skylar, we have Mike, we have Teradyne, we have Greg, we have Bruce, we have Matt, we have, uh, let's see, who else? Sad Mac, we have John, we have uh, Christian, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, if not, sorry. Uh, let's see, John, Matthew, uh, Mickey, Storm Crash, and Sean from Action Retro, hello Sean. Uh, Ms. Nev is here, and my goodness, we got a lot of people here, and I think that is, oh, we got Luke, and Jeff, and Retro Techie, hello Retro Techie, uh, <laughs> yeah, repair, system, repair stream with a hammer, <laughs> no, I don't think so, Trina's here, welcome Trina, and uh, let's see, anybody else, Mike, we've been over this, you just gotta, you just gotta, you know, show us the goods, and by that, I mean the Apple IIGS. And Malto's here, and Adam is here, and Distro Hopper's here. Okay, so we've got quite a full crowd today. Okay, so, um, before this stream, I was tinkering around with for a while of client boards that I'm still struggling with, because nine times out of ten, when somebody sends me something, it's not just recapping. You recap it, there are still problems. So that is the particular board I was dealing with earlier today, um, and that is this Macintosh SE30 board, um, and I just... I'm having the hardest time with this. It's giving me the uh, Sizzy Mac or with a sis with a, whatever it is, the zebra stripes. Um, and so with the with the problem that I'm having with that particular board, um, it is something that I've been. I'm just looking at my notes for the date here. Uh, it is something that I've been messing around with for a while. And I got this board um, from a client uh, as part of other work to do. And some of their stuff is already done, and some of their stuff is not, so, um, yeah. So, it's just, you know, there's a lot going on, so it's just uh, this stupid app update thing. Hold on, please. 
skip. There we go. Uh, so yeah, the, the this is um, uh, this is uh, one of my clients' boards. This is Brandon's board, and uh, we will be uh, looking at this another day because I I will. Um, I'm sorry, later today, because uh, Bruce is going to help. But Bruce is uh, indisposed at the moment. Uh, so he's going to be a second pair of eyes. Maybe he could spot something I did not. And Mike, already with the super chat. My goodness. Hello, Mike. Eep. Thank you very much for the super chat. Mike is fixing a iMac 20-inch G4 tomorrow. Come watch. This is a donation to the Hammer Fund. Rest in peace, Mr. Hammer. Mr. Hammer has been replaced, which is funny because five years ago when we moved into this place, or roughly around then, um, that old hammer, I didn't know where it was. So I went to Home Depot and I bought a new hammer. And as soon as I came home, I found the other one. So that new hammer didn't get too much use and I found it right away, thankfully. Now I have a toolbox to put it in, which I know I didn't have a toolbox for the longest time. Blame my brother on that one. He was supposed to get me a toolbox. He didn't. So anyway, anyway, enough blame of things. But uh, I love that little kitty emoji. That's adorable. Okay, so my goodness, the chat's flying by. And I have it zoomed in, so that doesn't help. Uh, da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Anything else here? Uh, no, don't worry if you, if you can't stay long. It's, uh, you pop in and out whenever you want. Uh, recapping analog board from the iMac G3. Oh boy, yeah, good thing discharging the tube. <laughs> oh boy, and Don, hello, welcome to the stream. Let's see, um, yeah, 20 inch iMac, those are fun. Oh great, you got it tomorrow. What? Well, it better work, Adam. <laughs> oh boy, uh, let's see, no more cleaning of the basement. No, there'll be plenty of cleaning of the basement probably tomorrow. We got a giveaway tomorrow. In fact, let me uh, let me put that link in there. So I'm giving away an AlphaSmart 4000 word processor. And here's the link. Now you gotta watch that video and you gotta go to the website that I specify in order to get all the information um, to you know, go to the giveaway. Cause today, today guys, today, 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 today is the last day to enter that giveaway. Tomorrow we're giving it away. Today you got, uh, what time is it here? I got like three, three and a half hours, something like that. So you better submit for that giveaway. Uh, I don't know what time we'll be doing tomorrow. I'll probably set up that stream um, after Mike's stream, or maybe before. You know, I'll do it before, and then when I'm done with that giveaway stream, everybody has to go to Mike's channel. And there you go. So, yeah. All right. So, learned well. What, what do you mean? What do you mean by shipping the things on time? I've never had a problem shipping things on time. Somebody else has problems shipping things on time. A uh, funny thing about that scanner, I was I was very 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 ready to just uh, give it away, but it has a SCSI port on the back, and I realized I was testing it on USB. Maybe it worked better under SCSI. Probably not, but who knows? Um, oh, thank you very much, John. I appreciate it. Yes, that clone video was a heck of a lot of fun. So, um, <laughs> no worries, Teradyne. That's awesome, though. That the 3000 is a real nice one. Um, by making people watch your video. Well, the video explains the giveaway. I'm not making people watch a two-hour stream to figure out a magic word to enter a giveaway. That's that's stretching a bit much. Watch this eight-hour live stream to fix... No, no, thank you. I know he finally did. We, we were all harassing him this morning, so that's excellent. Uh, I don't know, Josh. You keep asking the same question to yourself, so... All right, cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this SE30 board aside. Let me uh, find the bag that I took it out of. Oh, and this basement is um, still smelling a bit, even though it has been thoroughly cleaned. And I believe the problem is with the uh, trap for the pipe. Uh, one of the caps does not sit fully on that. So every once in a while, I just get a lovely whip whiff of... Um, lovely smells of things that um mm, yeah so why am i putting this back in the bag we're going to look at it when bruce comes so let me just forego that here so yeah this is um been a fun fun evening so far uh i'm running out of places to put things put it there for now okay it'll be great when i have the new desk uh set up over there with shelves and all that stuff so okay uh <laughs> no worries i repeat myself in my mind all the time Michael, thank you very much. That's very, very kind of you. Yes, exactly, Luke. Right on the nose. All right. Mmm. <coughs> mmm. Oh. oh. Oh, I need an air freshener here. All right, so we have two things to work on today. Uh, one is from a client, Sean. I believe it's a Macintosh Classic 2. Uh, the other one is 
I believe uh, this is from Hunter, and Hunter was in the chat before. Hunter, if you're sticking around, you might be seeing your 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 machine get worked on. Now, uh, let me take everything out of the box here. Refresh my memory of what you sent me to take a look at. I've got quite a few things in here. Alright, this looks like it's the logic board here. <laughs> He's like, yay! Uh, did you send me the analog board? The uh, analog board too? It looks like that. Um, I won't take that open yet because I don't have the uh, the caps or anything to do that. But I, I will hang on to that. But let me uh, take a look at what's here. Greg, you're using logic and common sense. This is something that we know that certain individual does not have all the time. So. Okay. Sweet. So, <laughs> we actually have those things, those air fresheners upstairs, but uh, I'm not, I'm not wasting a, a electrical outlet taking up that so I can smell things slightly better. And it's not going to do a lick of difference in this basement, I assure you. Uh, thank you, GP33. That's very kind of you. All right, cool. So, I believe this is, and I'll check the ticket and everything for this. Just to make sure we have everything. Hello, Raw Elements. Welcome. Got 40 people watching already. That's not too shabby, I don't think so. All right. So it looks like we have a classic board here. <laughs> the kitty litter's upstairs. All right. So we have a Macintosh classic board. Now, one problem right off the bat here is the ROM is missing. So, Mr. Hunter in the chat here, did you ever have a ROM with this machine? Because the ROM is missing, and it's not going to work without the ROM. So I can certainly recap it, but that's not really going to make the machine work. So that's right here. It's this, this big honking chip right here. Uh, I don't believe I have a spare. I can always check. I don't... Okay, you did remove the ROM. Okay. So uh, I will need to ensure that I have a ROM that I could put in there uh, for my testing here. Uh, those are some of my boards over there. I just want to make sure I have a Classic 1 board. These are Classic 2s. Classic. Everybody sends me Classic 2s. There we go. These are Classic 1. Oh, this is mine. Okay, so I could take the ROM off of that. And whose is this? It's, okay. So these are all my boards over here, so that's good. All right, excellent. No worries. Um, that is fun. Yeah, the, just be very careful. I'm going to warn you about this, and you probably know exactly what you're doing already, so it's just for the audience then. When you put that ROM in, that ROM is one pin shorter than the socket. So you could actually put the ROM in the wrong way and cause some damage or just make things not work correctly. So just a heads up there. Um, looks like you've went ahead and removed a few caps here, uh, from what I recall uh, in your email. And I'm going to bring that up just so I can sure we are working on everything the right way and everything like that uh, make sure I'm not uh, forgetting any notes or anything so hope everyone's doing okay today um, it's very cold if you're uh, anywhere located near I am we're supposed to get some nasty weather very nasty cold weather it's already like 20 degrees Oof. and so yeah not not the best weather right now <laughs> oh. Well, they, these are not mine to keep. They're, they're to repair and send back. So, <laughs> yeah, I did like the bootable ROM of the of the classic. It's really nice. Oh, the Mac Pro 2008s are nice. That's what I started streaming on. So, they removed themselves. Uh oh, that's scary. That's very scary. Well, we'll take a look. Don't worry. Um, another classic. I know it's a classic. It's a classic. All right, so let me um, put this over here just for a second. And we're going to enter in all the information here. Make sure we have everything correct. And record your serial number and everything so this doesn't get mixed up with any other suspicious-looking Macintosh classics, huh? This is very exciting data entry. Getting a, getting a peek into what's happening. So there's no PRAM battery, no PRAM battery cover, no ROM. No memory expansion board, etc. Okay, good. Just so I ensure that I send back exactly what you sent me. 
Ooh, that smell is uh, not the board, but uh, other smells in the basement are nice and ripe today. My goodness. All right, cool. All right, so sorry to, to deviate there for a second. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't. That that hammer might have been made out of. I don't know. <laughs> Something that's not a reputable material. I could assure you on that. All right, so let me just take a look at this here. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, yeah, I'm just double checking something. Pardon me. It sometimes takes a while. I'm a slow person when it comes to looking up multiple things on multiple screens and this and that. So, apologies. I will, I will, uh. I'll get there when I get there. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. PowerBook 140. Oh, those are cool. Very neat machines. Okay, here we go. So I'm just bringing up the diagnosis, the uh, symptoms rather, of uh, this individual board here so I can make sure that we are not jumping to any wild crazy conclusions here. Okay, so where did this come from here? Why is it, why is it not? Very strange. Sorry, give me a minute here. I just cannot. Did you, uh, Hunter? Did you initially contact me via uh, my website or social media? Because I'm trying to find the. I found a response to you, <laughs> but I didn't find the initial, uh, the initial uh, thing there. Oh no, there you are. Never mind. My Google's uh, uh, document is just being a pile of crap today. Alright. Faint hum. Display does not power on. Uh, not black, but entirely off. I get no feedback from the machine. Uh, pulled the logic board, and almost all the capacitors have leaked. Two have fallen off completely. There is also corrosion on the internal battery, but does not seem to have been leaked onto the board. We will take a look at that. Uh, analog board capacitors have also leaked. Ooh, that's fun. Um, yeah, so I, I don't have the tools to do the analog board just yet, but we will take a look at, uh, at everything else and see. So this will be an exciting one, I'm sure. Very exciting. Okay, let's catch up on the chat here. Ah, the tiny, titanium power book. Excellent. All right, let me charge my phone before I forget to. Sometimes I sit here for like six hours, and then I go to stand up, and my phone's dead. I'm like, what happened to that? How did that happen? All right, cool. So let that sit there. All right, cool. This uh, bundle of wires I stuck on the end of my microscope is not doing anybody any favors. This is awfully wobbly. Just that. There we go. Okay. Alrighty then. So it's time to dive in. So um, let's take a look at this board under a microscope. So we have an understanding of what's going on here. So let me switch over to that view and get a picture in picture. Hi. And we're gonna see. We're gonna see what's going on here. Okay. So. Nice, uh, nice SCSI port there. All right, so we're going to take a look at some of the areas where the capacitors once were. And, yeah, that is, that has, um, removed itself. And we have a trace missing already, so I'm going to point this out to everyone. Um, right here, there should be a connection between here and here. And you can see, it appears to be, now I'll double check, but it appears to be this trace is completely gone. Uh, so that would be needing to be repaired. So that is one thing to look at. Um, looks like it just could be the angle too. I will have to investigate. Um, it's very hard to tell sometimes the angle of these things, but that definitely looks like it is gone or it has been eaten away. Either or. Um, yeah, this this similar to that. Um, this not as bad. All right, good. That still has some there. That's okay. Um, yeah, so th a lot of the times, I mean, and, and I'm not, I'm not picking on anybody. I'm just saying any, any time uh, someone looks at a board and they say, oh, you know, the, the caps look okay or 
Obviously, in this case, uh, Hunter was smart. He knew that they were leaking, and he said that they were leaking in his description. But I get uh, emails all the time from people with photos, and they go, oh, they look like they're fine. And then, ooh, look at this one. <laughs> and uh, then you uh, you realize that, yeah, some, some damage has been done. And even if you don't realize it, the damage is there. So, yeah. All right, and then uh, we have some over here. Oof, yeah, look at this. Look at this. This is just all in this area here. Now, thankfully, I believe this is just one whole um, ground section here. So, that should be okay. But um, this trace here, looks like that's either eaten into or gone already. Um, mm, this, this board's going to smell delicious. I just know it. Uh, so let's take a look. I mean, some of the caps are already off, but we're going to have to remove them. Um, yeah, this looks like a fun one, but, uh, we're always up for a challenge, aren't we? Aren't we? I hope so. Yeah, this, this one's going to be interesting. Um, I don't know if we're, <laughs> if we're going to get any signs of life from this, uh, right away, but I, I will sure give it the old try. So, uh, oh yeah, these, these caps are going to smell delicious. I just know it. Uh, for those of you who, who saw the other stream, uh, I had caps popping left and right. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, most, most of the uh, ICs look okay. I am concerned about this one right here that's so close. Um, yeah, that's that's going to be... Uh, this whole board's going to be a lot of fun. But, uh, yeah, there's some green around some of the uh, feet here. So... Get that out of the way. I mean, this is going to have to go for an ultrasonic cleaning. Um, someone contacted me recently and said, Can you just recap it? Don't do the ultrasonic cleaning. I'm trying to save a few bucks. And I said, Look, I'm sorry. Um, if I recap it and it doesn't work, I have to do the ultrasonic cleaning because I'm not going to send you back something. You know, you'll pay for shipping and everything. I'm not going to send you back something that I don't know if it works or not. I mean, I want to I test the thing, make sure it at least starts up. I can get an image on the screen, etc. You know, um, yeah, this, this stuff, I mean, the parts, the, the capacitors aren't a lot. I mean, you spend, what, 10 to $15 on the capacitors um, before shipping. That's another $10. So what, you're out $20, $30, something like that. Um, but the time required to do this and the tools required to do this and the knowledge required to do this, it adds up. So, you know, it's... Uh, I, I will uh, say to anybody who is looking for recapping services, I am always happy to give you a quote. I'm happy to look at the machine for free. If you send the machine to me and you're not sure what it looks like, you don't have a magnifying glass, you don't have a microscope, I'll take a look at it and give you an estimate. You know, you just pay the shipping back and forth. Uh, if you don't want me to, to do the repair, if I give you a quote and it's too high, I'll send it right back. Don't worry. No worries. And at least you get an assessment of what's going on. But, um, yeah, it's just... It's not always as simple as a recap, unfortunately. So, this is a Macintosh Classic One. Oh, don't worry, don't be nervous. Um, so this is the first Macintosh Classic, and it actually has less capacitors on it, uh, I believe, than the Classic Two. So what we're going to do is we are going to get ourselves situated here. I have my tweezers. Where's the tweezers that I don't care if they get? Uh, yeah, that's them. Uh, and my other tweezers are right here. I found them. How about that? They were just hiding here. Yay! All right, so we're gonna do that. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, uh, especially some you guys I know on social media. I mean, come on. If 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 I if if you want a second opinion, I'd be happy to look at it. Obviously, I'll give you you know what I what I think it'll cost to repair the darn thing. And uh, uh, again, and I say this in all my emails, so I apologize if I'm repeating myself to some people. But the, the service I charge is just for the recapping. Like, this has one or two traces. I'm probably just going to go ahead and do those because they're right by the capacitors. Um, if this needs extensive trace damage, I would usually charge more for that. Um, but Hunter's here. We're not going to we're not gonna pull him through the, the screen and beat him up for any more. So I think I think that is, if it's just these one or two, I that's fine. I'm not going to go crazy if, if it's something by a bore uh, by uh, something else that we have to do extensive trace repair uh, that's when we start uh, calculating the totals there thank you very much Wells you were you were doing that the other day but that's <laughs> greatly appreciated thank you very much Eep. thank you very much for your your super chat there or is it a sticker I guess it's a sticker because it has a little face there well who knows I, I don't know the terminology of these things but uh, yeah 
Yeah, I mean, Luke, I, I guess, you know, if you want to send me a picture, send, send, feel free to do so, Luke. Um, it's always it's always harder to, to determine the things virtually, but feel free to send a picture. <laughs> Raw elements, it could just be something like dust. You never know. You never know. You never know. Yep. All right. Um... It's just age. It is age at this point, Stormcrash. Um, age. This is not the capacitor plague. This is age. These machines are 30 plus years old at this point. 35, 37 years old at this point. The original Macintosh is 37 years old. These machines are not young anymore. Those capacitors, they they never, they, they will not last as long as you would hope they would. Um, and these machines were not designed to run for 30, 40 years. Nobody, I'm sure, at Apple was saying, oh, in 30 or 40 years, these machines will still be going. And I get a laugh at people when they say, oh, Apple put in those crummy capacitors in there. I'm like, well, look at any Amigas. Look at any PC motherboards from the same time period. If they use similar capacitors, you're going to get similar problems with those. It wasn't just an Apple issue. Uh, I think we see them a lot on Apple machines because... Apple machines are more unique, where people tend to hang on to them more, uh, where, you know, PC logic boards can be swapped in and out, the parts are more interchangeable, there's a lot more stuff out there, but Apple was relatively smaller. So, you know, you get these types of machines that people tend to hang on to and they, they want to uh, restore. I mean, yeah, like people are saying, these weren't even designed for 10 or 15 years of usage, you know, especially the classic. They were low-end, Apple was just putting them together, uh, they were selling them, but uh, I digress. Anyway... We're going to get the caps off. We're going to get this uh, machine looking hopefully a bit better. And I need to find where I put my... There it is. So my tools here. Okay, so... Uh, what we're going to do is just put some flux. It's, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference because of the way these have been eaten away so much. I'm just seeing some more trace damage here, but uh, hopefully uh, things will not be as bad as our initial visions are but um, yeah I mean capacitors are they're not they're not a, a new thing <laughs> I mean no I mean I'm, let me rephrase myself uh, they're still in machines today so yeah you're gonna have cap issues no matter what the machine is this one's just wobbling off there that that I I, I touched that I just touched this capacitor and it, it came off here look at that look at that so, yeah. Well, let's let's see. Let's see about this one. Is this that's wiggling? But that'll come off. Okay. So, yeah. This uh this board is not messing around. It's like help, please, please, please. Yeah, and, and uh, Luke, I don't know where you're located or anything, but if you want a second opinion or anything, um, it, and again, it's it's always hard to do things over Twitter. You know, that's why I say if you're in the U.S. and you want to send um, stuff to me, the shipping is usually like, what, 10 to $15 to send it and send it back. So you're saying like $30 for an estimate. And, and that's even if, you know, I don't go through uh, doing the repair. But All right, so let's get some hot air on this. Looks delicious, doesn't it? Oh, there we go. That was a popper. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Luke. I always just assume everybody is, you know, right down the street from me. How dare I? Mmm, electrolytes. It's what's for dinner. All right, so let's let's look at the lovely carnage that is under these pads and uh, all right, under that cap rather. It's not too bad. I've seen worse.
<laughs> Pop cap. <laughs> That'd be funny. That would be funny. All right, let's get that out of the way here. All right, and let's move. We'll put this cap in the garbage. Move on to here. This is going to be fun. These are all... Oof. These have... Uh, oof. That is going to be fun. All right, let me take a picture of that serial number there because... Uh, they might, this label might get messed up because of all the cap juice. There's nothing I can do about that. We're going to try our best to preserve it. But, uh, no worries, no worries, Crazy Tech Reviews. Uh, we will, uh, Logan, we'll, uh, uh, we will, uh, we'll chat on Discord, I'm sure. We'll figure that out. <laughs> well, if it has a sound, you might be able to find it. Hey, Solar Strike, welcome to the chat. All right, cool. Yeah, all right. So we're gonna we're gonna continue along here. Uh, let's <laughs> since the other ones just fell off by us looking at it. I'm just curious. Ah, oh, those want to stay. All right, cool. So we're gonna get those right here. Now, these are right next to the sound chip, which does concern me. Um, because sometimes when you have that, the sound stops working, and I'm seeing some other. Oof, I'm seeing a lot of a lot of trace stuff that I don't like seeing, but. We're we're gonna we're gonna do our best to uh, resolve this. You're in good hands, Hunter. We're gonna try. All right, so hey, excellent solo strike. It's always nice to hear that these Macs are surviving. Another one saved. Came off. I was. I was. Oh, this one. This one just just decided to come off on its own. Okay. Ugh. Yeah. Look. Oh, jeez. That is a nice one there. We'll see how well we could clean that one up. How about that? My goodness. All right. Then the last two caps on the board. Let's hope these come quietly. Usually these small ones are pretty okay. They'll come off pretty easily. Didn't want to release for my tweezers, but... This one has this board has a mind of its own. These caps are just jeez. No, oh. <laughs> it popped in the waste bin. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oof. That is a uh, that is a whole pile of fun. This board. Yeah, there's there's some damage to the trace right there. And right there. I take that back what I said about the traces on this board. And this pad is lifting. Oh, this is going to be a fun project. Oof. Get that solder ball out of the way. Oh, boy. This is, this is going to... I can tell already. This is, <laughs> this is going to be one of those fun ones. <laughs> oh, while the soldering iron is off, let's change the tip on our iron. The one that we were using the other day. Put that back on. Oh boy. Well, thankfully, uh, I don't have uh, anything to do the analog board just yet. So, um, that is, uh, for better or worse, I guess, uh, we'll have to wait for another time. Uh, but if, if we uh, make progress on this, maybe I'll just take a look at it on the stream. We get shock and awe, everyone. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, not 
not uh, we don't have to discuss it right now, but there there may be some additional charges for the traces on this. Uh, we're, we're, let me see how bad it is, Hunter. But uh, this is uh, this is looking like an interesting board. We'll just say that, huh? <laughs> And you, you can never tell until you, uh, until you open it up. I'm going to change the blade on this scalpel. Uh, well, let's see if I have to. Let's let's look at the, the scalpel itself because sometimes that eh, should be okay for now. And we'll we'll keep that stay on standby if we have to. Hello, Pantone. Welcome, 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 welcome. All right. So what we're going to do is just uh, clean up this board a little bit. We're going to try and get some of this horrid stuff that was just sitting around on this board, all that gunk from the capacitors. I'm going to try and clean those off very gently. Um, well, 50 people of you guys watching right now. Thank you. And if, for those of you who are just casual watchers, I would like to beg and plead for a moment for you to subscribe to my channel because I'm about to hit 5,000 subscribers someday soon. And if I hit 5,000 subscribers, we will be doing another giveaway for not one but two Alpha Smart 2000s. That's right, I do have two, but I was I was waiting to give away the second one. But you know what? If we hit 5,000 on the way to 4,000, that was the original uh, plan there. Um, why the heck not? Let's give away two of them. So I'm sure all of you who are watching are probably subscribed already. But if you just wandered in off the street, if you're like, hey, what's this guy doing? Um, it would be fun. To have more subscribers here and of course then when you're subscribed you get notifications of you know when I pop on to a live stream and all that fun stuff so just just talking all right so, so these are cleaning up okay but of course we're revealing more trace fun under each and everything oh boy I'm very glad it's not Tuesday who said Tuesday no 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 Tuesday. <laughs> Saturday. Saturday. Tomorrow I sleep in. Uh, this morning I didn't get to sleep in as much, but I woke up without an alarm, so that was nice. Yeah, these pads are uh, lifting up already, so we're just being very careful. We do not want those to be damaged further. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look. Look. This whole section. Oh, my gosh. It is destroyed under there. Look at that, folks. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, this is just all... Sorry, we could put we could put fresh UV solder mask on that area, so it's nothing, nothing too bad. But, uh... Lovely. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> yes, Justin. Anytime. Anytime. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. I am not trashed. What are you talking about? Yeah, but under under this uh, this goodness here, let's let's see if we could we could get this further in here so you guys can see it better. Hopefully that's translating to the screen okay. There we go. Um, if we do some scraping here, we should see some shiny copper under there. Yeah, this... Oh, my God. Yeah, see, this This is... It's all under here. It's all under here. So this this will... Up until this line here, I think we'll have to, we'll have to remove all this because if we leave this under there, unfortunately... That's just going to continue to spread. It's going to cause more problems down the road. So, uh, this this isn't additional work or charges or anything. This is just more solder mask we have to put on there. That's all. I don't think the, uh, the you said the board is trash. Well, the board has some issues. It's it's had a hard life. I mean, we've we've all had a few bad days, haven't we? Lovely, lovely, lovely. Mm. Yeah, 
That's what we want to see. Nice shiny copper. Oh, Trina, it's your birthday tomorrow? Well, happy eat day to you. Happy birthday. We'll, uh, we'll do a cleanup stream tomorrow just for you. Does that sound about right? Or are you going to be just sleeping all day? Because that's what I would do on my birthday. <laughs> I'm going to go nowhere or I'm going to sleep all day. Lay on the couch, watch TV, sleep all day. Okay. All right. Yes, happy early birthday. But, uh... Okay, yeah, so we'll, we'll fuss with that a bit more later. That's not uh, essential to our plan. All right, so let's take a look over here. We have this that's looking like it's making a... Yeah, right, that's still making a connection. It was a bit dirty, but this trace is, looks like it's gone. Um, let's try and scrape away, see if there's anything under here. If so, we could just... Uh, oh, okay. Right, that looks like... Oh, yeah, well... Might have spoken too soon on this one. Well, I love it when the traces are right under a chip, so it's so hard to get right under there. Twenty-one, that's a great age. Oh, we still have some copper under here, surprisingly. Look at that. So this might just need to be cleaned. I uh, may want to run a wire there just to play it on the safe side. And let's see. Yep, we still got copper under here. And we still got copper under there. Oh, yeah, let's get rid of you. We don't, we don't need you on the board. Thank you. All this gunk. Please remove yourselves from the premises. You are not wanted here, sir. Thank you very much and good day. All right, so let's use our multimeter here. Sounds awesome, Trina. Sounds awesome. So. So we're just going to check the continuity between these two lovely looking places here. And you look at that. We still got a connection. Somehow. Magically. Somehow. Okay. Yeah, take your stung stuff and get out of here. Ooh, chocolate chips. Now I want some chocolate chips. Hold on. I'm going to go upstairs and get some pretzels and chocolate chips, and I'll be right back. That'd be a very noisy live stream. <laughs> Me just shoveling snacks in my face the entire time. Hey, guys. Jeez. All right, so let's, uh, let's use some flux here. And we have to be very delicate here. But what I do is I take some flux... Put it on the board, uh, take the soldering iron, which I should have heated up a few minutes ago, and um, and we're going to remove some of that goo from the board there. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Thank you so much. So kind of you. So kind. So kind. <laughs> this pretzel goes on the positive rail, right? Wait, this chocolate chip goes in the ROM. Oh, my tripod is going the wrong way there. Ah. Seriously? You don't, you're not turning? There we go. I need a new tripod. I need a new tripod. All right. Sorry. Sorry for the distraction there while the soldering iron heats up. There we go. Flux and cookies. Ooh, yummy. How old is this computer? Well... If you Google Macintosh Classic, that'll give you an idea. The logic board says 1990. I believe it was sold in 90 or 91. Flux and Cookie sounds like a song. An earworm of a song. All right, so let's just wait for that iron to heat up. Adjust the camera so it's as uh, straight as I see it. There we go. No worries, Pantone. Have a good one. Good night. All right, so what I'm going to do here is just get a big old solder ball on the tip of my iron. Trina didn't remind me about my fan. How dare she? 
<laughs> I'm going to see if we can just gently, gently help out these pads here. I'm going to get all that old dirt and solder and crud loose. There we go. Iron may not uh, be fully heated up yet, so we'll give it a few more seconds. But yeah, see all that gunk? That is all corrosion and dirt and old solder. And oh boy, doesn't that look delicious? No worries, Teradyne. See you later. And thank you for the good luck. Watch it all bubble, bubble. Yeah, we got some of that gun coming off. Yeah, but Nick, you also have to think of the time, man. Nobody, nobody was using the word classic on a computer. Nobody. These were mostly sold in schools. They were the low-end computer. I mean, yeah, people bought them. The Classic 2 is not a bad machine. And the Classic isn't a bad machine, too. It, it's one of the... It's. I think it's... Actually, it is the first compact Mac I ever got. It was a Macintosh Classic. I believe so. I think I got it the year 2000 or 2001. That's when I got my first Macintosh Classic. My gosh, 21 years ago. I love the little thing. I didn't care about any of its limitations or anything. In fact, it was the first computer I lent my grandpa. My grandpa learned how to use a computer on a Macintosh Classic. We soon gave him a... Uh, I think it was a 7100 I lent him. And then we, he got a, an iMac G3. And that was, those was his, uh, pretty much his first computer experiences. Had all that gunk off there. You're not welcome here, gunk. I banish you from this board. Well, let's hear your backstory. Come on. Don't tease us like that. <laughs> well, see, that's a lot of things. If if a lot, that's a frequent thing, rather. Um, there you go. Bruce speaks the truth, um, and especially in those situations in the school or a business, if something works, if something is actively working and they don't foresee a problem with it, they're not going to invest more money to fix something that's not broken. That's foolish, and there's usually no no room in the budget to do such silly things. And welcome back to the stream, Bruce. Get all this gunk off of these pads. Disgusting. But the Classic is a perfectly capable machine. Oh, now we have... See, you jinxed it. Now we have 48 people. Oh, well. Oh, well. Uh, this is a Macintosh Classic, and I should put up that little overlay thing, but uh, I didn't remember. Oopsie. All of you should recognize what a Macintosh Classic logic board looks like from me messing around with these so much, right? Right? Why am I hearing crickets? Put some more flux on there. Whoa. 
Well, but <laughs> compared to before, anything looks better. Because this this was was a uh, a fun party board before. I mean, this this board saw some action. It's a uh, poor little guy. Just so much more gunk on these pads. Sometimes it just takes a lot of patience. We're not rushing here. We don't want to. We don't want to hurt the board or anything. Obviously, some traces already requiring some problems. We don't want to introduce any other problems that the board has not had previously. Just gonna take our sweet time. There we go. This this pad finally is uh, clean enough for some solder to stick to it here. And we're just hovering very lightly over the pad. We're not pushing down. We're not scraping or anything. That's why this takes some time. I might scrape briefly with just the tip of the iron, like to get like little, yeah, like that little bit off of there. But that's that's about it. Okay, so I think that's ready for some cleaning, and we're just going to repeat this. Oh boy, that sounds like fun. Oh boy, plumbing issues, Bruce. Well, yes, I am with Trina. I hope they are not as severe and as annoying and inexpensive as mine were. Boy, don't worry, Jolt Tech. You will learn. I did not always know how to do this, and I learned. Started, started very, very young, and <laughs> just grew eventually. Uh, so, Greg, um, I am working on a recapping guide to. For the 2SI power supply, Bruce of BrankersCreations.com, RecapAMac.com, already has a recapping guide for the Macintosh 2SI power supply. Uh, the only thing that's there is um, not the capacitor uh, parts themselves. You would have to do research on which capacitors you will need. But go to RecapAMac.com, there's the ad right there, and make sure you go subscribe to Bruce's channel as well. Excellent tutorial videos there. Um, but I would suggest you check that out first. I am uh, ordering some capacitors later today, tomorrow, um, and part of them are capacitors that should fix my 2SI power supply. If they do, I will add those uh, to a document, and I'll make sure Bruce knows those as well, uh, so maybe he can put those at a list on his site. But, uh, yeah, I am, I am uh, taking a look at that as well, and uh, hopefully we get that working. So, yeah, I mean, Neil, you really got to be careful with this stuff, unfortunately. But uh, no worries, Joel Tech. You will, you will, you will develop your skills. That is, that is something that we all do over the course of our lives. And all I got to say is, is practice on junk, old VCRs, old satellite TV boxes, stuff that has no value, that nobody cares about. Rip it open, take the capacitors off, put them back on. You know, just have some training with it. So. Oh, the Macintosh 2 power supply. Oh, boy. That's a, that's, that's a beast. Thankfully, mine still works. <laughs> it clicks, but it doesn't turn over. Thank you for subscribing, Greg. That's awesome. Uh, and <laughs> oh, boy. Another feeling. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. So let's, let's uh, clean this up here. Let's continue to clean this up. No, no, no. All my VCRs sand for maybe one or two that have broken belts and are beyond repair or, or just not worth repairing are mine to keep. My SVHS, Super VHS VCRs are not for tinkering. No siree. Trina just may not appreciate them, so she's probably like, duh. 
Get rid of those things. Nobody needs them. These are looking a little bit better. There's still some gunk on there. Now there's some gunk under this chip. Oh, just look at that. So much lovely, lovely stuff here. All this board is going to have to go through the ultrasonic cleaner, of course. Get yeah, itself all cleaned up. Yeah, I we have one of the, well, not the last one, but uh, my father has a, a uh, Fenari uh, DVD slash, uh, DVD recorder slash VCR. Uh, and so it's one of the one of the last units probably that they sold at least here in the U.S. Just try and get some of that gunk away from there as we're as we're cleaning this up. <laughs> I still use them because I will get um, like a home videotape. You know, that's one of a kind. There's probably not a lot of them out there. You know, maybe my family copied it or whatever, but. You know, it's still the content on there is unique, and I will sometimes get a tape and still need to digitize it. Uh, and then there are, there are tapes that I've digitized already, but the method that I've digitized it on uh, is probably not the best. Like an old DVD recorder that had weird menus or something like that, maybe I want to copy it again. So uh, There is a reason to my madness. I'm not saying it's uh, it's foolproof, but I'm saying there's, uh, there's reasons why I hang on to this old junk. I will find a reason to hang on to old junk. That's, I think, a problem. But that's for that's a problem for another day. All right, so we're just going to continue cleaning up here. Hopefully, this is the worst of it because these are pretty looking pretty rough here. Thankfully, under this trace, it looks pretty good. We'll just cover that with some solder. Solder, however you want to pronounce it. And that should not be a problem, hopefully. The same goes for this one. That looks to be okay. We did test continuity with that. So there we go. Oh. Thank you, Greg. Oopsie. You didn't miss much, just more scraping. It looks identical to the way it did before. <laughs> My progress is I'm still cleaning. How about that? Oh, boy. He's in the zone. He can't hear us. That's another thing. People will comment on my streams. Your volume's a little lower, blah, 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 blah. Like, after the live stream premiered, it's like, you realize I can't hear myself. <laughs> I'm talking to myself because it's quiet and I feel awkward, so I have to, like, do something. But I can't hear myself, and I can't hear any of you, obviously. You're all typing. But, <laughs> I don't know, maybe one day we'll have a Skype party or something for patrons. That'd be fun. Okay, it looks much better than it did before. But, uh... Yeah, somebody by me has a Video 8 player for sale. And I have a few Video 8 tapes. I never saw a Video 8 player before. So, yeah, some camcorders can play them, but this is a dedicated one, so I might have to look into that. Okay, all right. All right, so let's get a little more heat on this just to uh, try and clean this mud up because this is being stubborn. <laughs> Model M typing. No, thank you. No, thank you. Not enough solder on the tip there. We'll uh, go a little overboard here, but we want to make sure those pads are clean so they make a clean connection to the new capacitor when we put that on. It wants to stick. Come on. Alright, that pad is looking much better. This one, on the other hand, come on. 
still some gunk is being very stubborn over there. Sometimes it's just the corner that does not want to uh, to help out here. Oh, excellent, Greg. That is awesome. Yes, I mean, I, I learned a lot from Bruce, so he, he definitely deserves a lot of credit. Um, and uh, I have... You know, I've, I've always been a, a little bit of a solderer myself, but uh, with the right tools and everything, it really makes a lot of a difference. Uh, yeah, I was just using an old soldering iron from Radio Shack, and no heat control or anything. I wasn't really using the right flux and all that stuff, so. It really helps when you have a better idea of, of what tools that are best suited for the job. And I'm not saying you gotta go out and spend crazy money on a big microscope or expensive set of this or that or anything like that, no. Okay, so that's looking a bit better. So we're going to move on to uh, cleaning other areas. We'll come back to this, but there's always going to be more uh, more we needing there. So, okay, good old Radio Shack. All right, so these are going to be fun. Oof, ooh, I could taste it. You just taste it by looking at this. You know, Storm Crash, uh, Storm Crash, rather. Um, it's a very interesting concept, but the thing is, without an understanding of the in-between segments of the board here, that's going to be difficult. A lot of these do have schematics, but they are not good schematics. They are not perfect schematics. They might not even be 100% correct schematics. I'm all for it. I would love to see that. Trust me, I would. But, um, unfortunately, I don't think we will ever get the support that we need from such schematics to rebuild these boards without a considerable amount of reverse engineering. Now that may be worth it for a Macintosh SE30, which is a very sought after computer and unfortunately those logic boards seem to have a lot of trouble. Um, but that may not be worth it for a machine like a Classic or uh, something else that is less sought after. But Yeah, and those schematics aren't the best. Um, you know, my hat's off to anybody who's trying that, because it's not fun. I know it's not. So we just put a big old solder ball in here. We're just trying to get away all this gunk. And you got to be very careful, because these pads are probably itching to remove themselves from the board and vacate the premises. So we're just going around with a hot iron, going over very quickly hovering over, not really scraping or anything. Just first pass here. Oh, these smell wonderful. These smell fantastic. Mm-mm. Delicious. I'm so glad I ate dinner a few hours before because now... I don't think I'd have the appetite. Some of these just hitting it with the side of the iron helps break them up. Not hitting it, not pushing it too hard, just lightly now. Yeah, there, there's some of the Lovely stuff coming off of there. Because you don't want to put capacitors on with old solder and electrolytes and all that gunk that's still in there. Because that's not going to help anybody. It's still going to be eaten away at the board. You're still going to have problems. I just look. You can't. I can't even see the pads. There's so much dirt in this area now. So let's clean that area off.
The fish milk goes to the cookies. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Luke, this is, this is fun times. This is this is what uh, the clients usually don't have to deal with, is the smelling. This should be a smell fee. <laughs> you don't got to smell the capacitors, but I do. And let me tell you, they are ripe. Oh, look how much dirt and... Oh, that's disgusting. Get all that off. Obviously, we have to clean everything around this, because we don't want all those that old solder and all that old junk hanging around well thank you very much Alex we are fixing a Macintosh classic board which has had a battle with some yucky old aging capacitors we are trying to save it so hunter in the chat this is hunter's board if he is still around But yeah, this this board, um, the capacitors were just falling off. I didn't have to heat them up too much. We only had one or two pop on us, and the rest just left of their own free will. They're like, if that's what you're doing, I'm out of here. No, thank you. Not pushing hard here, just lightly getting all this gunk off. Okay, all right. I'm a risk taker. <laughs> well, all I say is, Luke, practice, practice, practice. You'll be fine. As long as you practice, you'll be good. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, there are tons of iMac G3s everywhere. And for better or worse, uh, a lot of them have issues with the screen no longer working. So if you really want an iMac G3 to destroy, well, not destroy, well, to take apart, um, you know, there's, there's the capacity of how many were sold, the number of how many were sold, rather, is on your side. <laughs> Alright, that looks a bit better, wouldn't you say? Computer recyclers are also uh, a good option. Interesting. Didn't know about those keyboards, huh? Okay, Hunter. Gr glad you have stuck around there. We are... We are making your classic feel loved, hopefully. No, there, there used to be one a few years ago. I actually used to go once in a while. Uh, you know, when I was desperate, I needed a battery or I needed a solder or something. And I would go there, and unfortunately, the, the Radio Shacks by me never really had, like, the big clearance sales of when they were going out of business. Um, you know, I hear stories of people raiding. They were raiding the Radio Shacks parts drawers for, like, dollars for the whole drawer, you know. Uh, I would have loved that, because I could always find uses for a switch, or a this, or that, or tinker around with stuff. Um, but no, by me, they just sort of whimpered out. Uh, they all turned into phone stores. Um, but uh, yeah, there's none by me, unfortunately. Uh, I would absolutely... Now, they're going away too, but Fry's, they, they were a great store, but... On the East Coast, we don't have Fry's. The best we have is a micro center. I'm thankful that there's one in my state, but it's a good hour away. So I don't go there often. I go there just about oh, a few times a year. It's probably dangerous there is not one closer. I mean, there's, it would be dangerous if there was one closer, because I'd be there probably you know, multiple times a month, just getting parts, doing this and that, getting, getting things I probably don't need. So... Yeah, Micro Center is pretty okay for parts. Um, I usually just do eBay for weird parts or Amazon or uh, Mauser for capacitors and stuff like that. But for cables and, and junk, you know, they have a very good, they have a much better selection than Best Buy, obviously, because they have a bigger, a bigger focus on just computer things, where Best Buy is more general, obviously. Uh, don't get me wrong, Micro Center still has some general stuff. 
um, you know, TVs, etc. But you know, they're they're focused on uh, on more uh, computers and, and that type of thing. Yeah, just getting all this gunk away from that. Oof. Yeah, DigiKey is another good one. Um, honestly, I just get whoever has the parts in stock, so I could I could order from DigiKey or Mauser. You know, no no problem with either one. Great places. All oh, this is so crusty. Ugh. Mmm, mm, delicious. A considerable amount of crud on this uh, on this pad here. Yes, RS Components is good. I generally just buy from, you know, I'll find whoever has the most parts in stock, and I'll just buy from them. I don't, I don't have really a preference or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it's great to have choice. I mean, that's the beauty of online is you can just, you know, shop wherever you want and get whatever you need. But uh, Radio Shack was always nice because you could go there, and within a few hours you'd have what you want. Um... Which is fantastic. I mean, gosh, I used to, just like, oh, I need a battery. Oh, I need some wire. Oh, I need this. I need that. And you'd pay a lot more. Of course you would, because they would only have the one type of wire, or they only have one this or one that, and the prices was not, uh, you know, as cheap as you could get elsewhere, but, you know, they had it. And, um, yeah. Oh boy! All right, so let's. Uh, there we go. How long have we been doing this here for? Let me just check. Uh, an hour and fifteen minutes. My goodness. Do G fours need recapping? Well, I hear the power supplies on a lot of them are having issues. I don't know if it's as simple as a recap to fix them. I am by no means a repair expert on the later Power Mac and Power Max. Um, I just I just don't know too much about them. Um, now, anything with capacitors, there's always a chance that uh, they will fail before uh, their, you know, estimated lifespan. So it's always great to just take a look at your machines and check. But uh, I have not uh, had any particular issues with my G3 yet, but uh, my G4 rather, but who knows? Yes, I'm ready for my stream tomorrow too. I want to see him fix up that iMac G4. So all of you uh, probably heard me promote it a little while ago, but you're there may be some new people that are joining. But Mike from Mike's Mac Shack, and you do not super chat me, Mike. You already did once. Mike from Mike's Mac Shack is doing a stream tomorrow, so subscribe to his channel. And on his stream, he will be looking at his iMac G4. 20 inch that's the lamp iMac the Luxo iMac whatever you want to call it the iMac G4 the one with the cool LCD and the movable neck and everything he has a 20 inch model and uh, his kitty cats were not so kind to it and they knocked it over so he's going to be taking a look at it now that he has some space and he's going to see if he can fix that up so I'm very curious if he can get it to work too so I will be tuning in I will be in the chat there to say hello to you all and of course, Mike will be our gracious host while he tries to fix his iMac. So I am very much looking forward to that. Very, very exciting. The hairy jerks. 
Oh, lovely kitty cats. <laughs> I am the master, I can fix thou CRTs. Thy flyback transformer is no match for my, um, duh, 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 um, duh, whatever the tool is called that I'm using. <laughs> Yeah, CRTs are, are not uh, what I prefer to work on. I strongly prefer not to touch them if I don't have to. Uh, I have never di discharged a CRT in my life. I know. Isn't that weird? Because I work on Compact Max a lot. I'm just very careful with what I touch. Uh, not that I am planning to keep that forever. I just have not had the need to do so right away. Uh, I will be, obviously... Um, building a tool. I have all the parts and everything. I'll be building a uh, a tool to discharge the CRT Max. Uh, I also have some other CRTs that I need to discharge before I do servicing and junk, so uh, that is a tool I have to build and a skill that I have to build myself up to, but I just don't like working around those if I could avoid it. That's sort of why I'm putting off some of the uh, analog board work because I'd have to get familiar with my own and I want to test it on my own machine and all that stuff before before I mess around with the clients obviously again we're just trying to scrape off all this gunk because this is a nasty one this is a particularly nasty one uh, there's a lot of gunk here I'm gonna reflow the solder not reflow but I'm gonna uh, get some nice fresh solder over this trace here I'm gonna cover that up with solder mask later on but uh, Hopefully that should fix the issue there. Gonna continue along here. Well, let me catch up on the chat. Oh my goodness. What was what, is, what did I miss? What did I miss? Oh Sean! Thank you very much for your super chat. That's very much appreciated, Sean. Eep! <laughs> and yes, Mike's Mac Shack is the best for Max and Cats. We only have, uh, well, we have one cat, so not cats here. But we have uh, one cat here and the rest are bunnies. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, sorry, Luke, I don't mean to jinx you. <laughs> yeah, the iMac G3s are really neat. Um, you do need room for them, though. Ooh, yeah, it could have been poor solder, Justin. That stinks. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a bunch of Mac cases that are okay but the components are dead so I, I could uh, I could probably do um, one of those fancy things of putting a new machine in the older case but I just have not had the chance to do so or the need to do so yet so I did not watch Sean's video yet but it looks very cool somebody offered me uh, the same model the same uh, little printed case but uh, whoever it was the price was a little bit more than I was willing to spend just for piece of pretty plastic that would hold a machine that I don't really touch too much because uh, I have a lot of Raspberry Pis and they all do different things and uh, I have like cardboard cases for them <laughs> because they just sit there and do their stuff and they're not fancy um, yeah so I'd, it's probably not the, the best spending of my monies right now but uh, it looks really cool I, I want to check that out slow as hell <laughs> Uh, no, the cat is not allowed in the basement because the bunnies are in the basement. Whenever he comes down the stairs, I yell, cat, and then he goes back upstairs. And yes, the cat has a name, but I refer to him as cat because he's the only cat in the house, so who else would I be talking to? That is my logic, and I'm sticking to it. And he responds to it, so. You just look at him and you, you say a word to him and he knows that when he's not supposed to go outside or he's not supposed to go downstairs. You know, he, he's just a little jerk sometimes. But he's a lovable little jerk. And he's an old cranky man. So I gotta get, cut him some slack. Gotta be nice to him. My goodness, there's so much... Ugh. Disgusting old corrosion and solder and dirt and grime and nasty stuff. A 
get some of that off. Come on. Yes, I will watch. Don't worry. It's on my Sunday morning watch list. He's more like 16 or 17. <laughs> uh, you're probably thinking of Mike's Mac Shack. He has all the kitties. My kitties are... My cat is always upstairs. So, yeah, you probably have not seen him. But Mike has a bunch of cute cats. Big floofs. Bunch of floofs. So that's another reason to jump on to Mike's stream tomorrow. Watch all of his floofs in the background. More cats than you can shake a stick at. These pads are really fighting me today. Usually it's not this bad. Usually they uh, they will clean up pretty good. But some of these just... just A lot of residual gunk on there that... I mean, it, do, I, it doesn't have to be perfect for it to be a good connection here. But especially when there was such significant uh, rot of the capacitors, I do like to clean up as much as possible uh, to remove all uh, all problems here. Potential problems. <laughs> I'm sure the cool factor is through the roof. But yes, yes, Sean's cat uh, comes out from time to time. Find food. Now I'm hungry again. Well, I just had I had a huge dinner too. Huge dinner. Made a whole bowl of. Um, and everyone, nobody's gonna find this interesting, but me. I made a whole bowl of uh, uh, onions, peppers, rice. Um, had some kale in there. Had uh, what else was in there? Uh, some cheese, some seitan, and just uh, mixed it all up. Uh, chickpeas. It just oh, it was just a huge like bowl of food. And you would think I wouldn't be hungry right now, but everyone's talking about cookies and stuff. No, no, I don't want a cookie. Oh, this stuff is just bleh. yuck, 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 yuck. No worries if you guys have got to leave at whatever point you just do it. That's why the stream is up after hours. You can rewind, you catch up. Why, thank you. I am not by any means a chef, but uh, I was trying to mimic the recipe of a place that we usually order out from, but can't really do that right now because they're far away and such. <laughs> Plus, that gets expensive. I mean, obviously a lot of us have probably been ordering in more. My goodness. <laughs> hey, here's your here's your meal, and then there's a $25 delivery fee. <laughs> Plus the tax and the tip. There you go. I'm not saying that the people... Delivering the food or doing all that stuff don't deserve it. I'm just saying it adds up. That's all. That's all. Every time I think, oh, I got most of the dirt out of here, <laughs> more of it appears. <laughs> oh, it is too cold to go out. I just went to get groceries uh, this evening, and my goodness, is it frigid out. Absolutely frigid. All right, let's go back to our friend the scalpel. No worries, Joltek. Keep keep practicing. I'm sure, you'll you'll do just fine. Have a good night. Thank you very much for the kind words. All right, so we're gonna try and just keep scraping away here. We go. 
Yeah, sometimes the soldering iron trick does not work, and you just got it. You just gotta use a scalpel and scrape all that junk away from these pads, because we do not want that stuff to stick around. And I think it may be time to change this blade. Let's take a look at that. Uh, it's got a little bit of life left in it. Come on. It. <laughs> Is just the keep that keep the gift that keeps on giving. I mean, let's see if we get a better better close up of this because I, I think you guys just really need to appreciate. I know it's out of focus. Give me a second. I think you guys just really need to appreciate how uh, disgusting this is. Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, let's see. Right now it is 25 degrees. I think it's going to drop a few degrees. That is Fahrenheit, of course, for where I am. But, uh, yeah. Lovely, lovely weather. Just as much, almost as lovely as this crap here. Thank goodness. Super crusty. Now with extra crust. That should be enough here. Uh, hopefully, uh, that's most of that off of there. All right, so we still got some over here. Yeah, these all these little parts. Oof, jeez. Yeah, look at this trace here. Is there anything left under here? Maybe. Yep. Yeah. Yes, there is. All right. So that. Yeah. Look and look at these legs too. Oof. That has. That is not a good sign. Look at this. Yeah. So these legs have hit a lot. Oh, these got. These got a blast from those capacitors. Look at that. Uh, the board that I put vinegar on is drying. It has improved somewhat, but uh, that is as much as I've, I've done. Uh, that is a SE30 board that was uh, sent to me in uh, non-salvageable condition, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, these... I don't know if, this, if these legs are completely eaten away there. Or what, but... Ooh, yeah, look at... Look. Jeez. Yeah, that's not good. Yuck. Oh boy. 29 degrees Celsius. Oh boy. That's a little bit different. Yeah, so, you know, sometimes it's just a recap, but this, this unfortunately may need a little bit more work. And you see this trace going here it may not even be connected there anymore. It actually is. That's good, uh, but we may need to assist. Yeah, this this might need. I'm gonna call it here that this board will likely need ultrasonic cleaning before we could even test it because the problem is, we get chips like this where there's so much gunk in between the legs and everything and under the chip that it's impossible 
to uh, see what the... Yeah, look at this. Just, oof. Yeah, this is... Lovely. So the actual legs of the chips are here. This is just where solder is. And that solder is just all flaking off here. So this this is not... This is not uh, by any means not repairable or anything. It's just disgusting the way that uh, capacitor fluid will just leak onto other areas and spread and um, cause all sorts of damage. So I'm going to get as much of that gunk off of this board as we can because it's not wanted. Not wanted. Exactly. You do have to worry about what is under the chip. Um, that is where a lot of photos come into play sometimes. Uh, I will... Uh, there was one board that I have that's mine, and I took a lot of the chips off. It was a Classic, or Classic 2 board. I think it was a Classic 2. And I took all the chips off of this particular area just to see which traces went here, which ones went under the chip, etc. So then I took some photos, and so I know for future reference, okay, that's what's under that one if I ever have a problem. Uh, I could test this spot, I could test that spot, see if what's connecting, etc. Because you don't know what's supposed to go to one pin or another, etc. So. And you know, seeing this broken, uh, well not broken, but this corroded trace right next to that chip just shows you how much damage was done to that particular area. Alright, these should be okay pretty much now. We do have some solder mask and stuff to put over them, but uh, that's looking a lot better. So let's move our attention here. Uh, this is going to be equally as fun, I'm sure. Where are we? Where are we? We're too zoomed in. Zoom out! Quick! There we go. Alright, so these weren't too bad, but we got to clean these up anyway, and that trace likely needs some attention. Be gone, Cap Goo! Please! Turn this fan off because I'm cold and there's no soldering going on, so we don't need it right now. But let's see. Oof, yeah, this is okay. We still got some copper under that, so that is good. Oh, let's see. Is that a break right there? Well, we could test that in here. Okay, we could we could clean that up too. So you don't want to leave those black marks on there, those little spots or anything, because those can continue to mess things up. Even uh, even if the, the trace is still intact, these black spots can continue to corrode and all that good, fun stuff. So you want to be extra careful. Even here, look at the, yeah, this. there's a lot of little spots on this board. But we're going to we're gonna do the, the minimum we can to see if we get this working, and then we'll go from there. No worries, Neil. Catch you later. <laughs> no worries, Luke. See you later. Oh, boy. We'll probably go for a, uh, another hour or so. I'm uh, not going to go too late, because this is probably going to be a multi-part adventure. But, uh... Yeah, and this, especially with the way these pads are right here. Look at that pad. It's just... It's just flexing. And the goo and stuff that's under there. That is just not a happy pad right there. So you have to be very, very careful with that. Thankfully, if it does break, we could just attach a uh, capacitor right there. But we're going to be extra, extra careful in this area. See if we get some of that gunk off just manually. Oh, boy. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Let's see what else may need uh, fixing up here. Let's uh, let's just be very gentle with this. Well, let's try uh, with the soldering iron in these pads. Not so much elsewhere, but trying to mix that up.
Get that bad stuff off of the board, please. Hope everyone is doing well tonight. Everyone's probably going to bed, I realize. It's late. I'm not going to stay up too late tonight because then I sleep in most of Sunday and it's like, oh, where are we going to go? Oh no. But we are doing that giveaway stream tomorrow sometime, probably before Mike's stream. And then when I'm done, everyone go watch Mike. Perfect. Perfect. It's almost like we planned it like that. Very careful with that one. Look at all that disgusting dirt and junk. Ugh. It is Saturday. That's right. <laughs> You're not planning on sleep. Thanks for the pressure. No pressure. I see. I see. See a bit more trace damage over there. We're going to take a look at. It's to, to a degree. This is cleaning up pretty nice. I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff that's just sticking around. I mean, this is this is the size of the, the, my finger, you know, compared to some of these spots. So it's very difficult to get an exact. Uh, view on some of this stuff from with without like a microscope or anything like that that's why it's always so helpful to just have a magnifying glass or a microscope or whatever you could use just to get a better idea of what the heck is going on all right so no not everyone could afford a microscope but a magnifying glass sometimes or one of those cheapo little webcam ones they're not the best but in a pinch they are better than your naked eye so <laughs> I might fall asleep on stream too. That would make for an interesting stream. Oh yeah, there we go. All that all that disgusting brown goop. leave that for a second because that pad was wiggling and we do not want to make the pads wiggle unnecessarily all right come on let's get all that goop out of there please thank you those look okay but these down here Oops, we'll get that off there later. Okay, um, where there it is. So, not my favorite soldering wick, but this is the one I have right now. So, Gonna use it. I'd love to know where I put the other one. Oh, you know what? It's probably in a bag I have upstairs, but. Should have thought of that about that before I came downstairs. Okay, that's not too bad. 
It's not too bad either. Okay, so. Uh, it's cleaned up reasonably well. Yeah, that's a wiggly one, so we're going to be very careful over there. Don't want that pad to fall off. Just gives us another thing to worry about fixing. All right, so this is stuck to a place on the board, so we're going to let the iron heat up. And then we're going to try and loosen it up very carefully here. There we go. Okay. Right, so that doesn't look horrendous. I mean, it does with the uh, all the flux and junk there on the board, but we'll give it a bit of a cleaning. A lot of this is just rinse and repeat. Just keep on doing this. Just keep on doing that. Just clean this. Just. I mean, for some boards, they clean up real nice, real quick. Others like this, they're going to require a bit more maintenance. So we've got another spot there to worry about. Okay. All right. It is time to change the blade on this here scalpel. So let's do that now. Um, because this one's become a bit dull. Fine for scraping off junk and stuff, but uh, so I will. I will actually put that over here. Trina is, Trina is not here to yell at me about saving junk, so don't tell her. Okay, I'm just going to put the new blade on here. Should make a world of difference for us. If I had a good player of pliers, I could do this easily, but... And there it goes flying down below. Very sharp blade in a very <coughs> sensitive area. Good idea. Uh oh, she's back. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. So, yeah, much sharper here. Should be able to get some of this gunk off a bit easier. Hopefully. Maybe. Possibly. Possibly, maybe. I'm here in the background. <laughs> it's very ominous. Like I am always watching. That'll have to do for now. Okay, anything else in this area that we have to be concerned about right now? Just that's okay. See, sometimes also the light bounces off of the pads differently, so like what may look like dirt is just like a shadow, like some of the solder is a little higher than the rest. Here it was dirt, so we're wiping that away. But sometimes it's hard to tell. 
especially the view you guys are seeing, because you see it through one lens. It's mono. I'm actually seeing it in stereo, so each eye I'm seeing slightly different things, so uh, sometimes it's a little bit easier for me to determine if something is a hair or a broken trace, whereas on the stream it's a little more difficult to. Okay, so those pads are not in uh, too bad shape. Let's uh, we have to clean up that that uh, trail of way too long solder. And we'll have to clean up those pads a little bit. So let's do that now. Yeah, see some of the traces like this, they don't necessarily need to be redone. They just could use some reinforcement of some solder on them. So if they were weak, um, you know, any problems that they may have had could be resolved in that way. So I am thinking I need a new heating element for my iron because... Oh, yeah, 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 yes. So what happens when I switch things and forget? I'm an old man, I get confused easily. I'm sorry. We just have like a big red button that you push like, and it just like shakes my chair. He's doing something wrong, press the button. So a trace like this, this is the one I'm talking about. Um, just putting some solder over it should resolve that issue there. And this must be a ground one because we are getting a lot of resistance in trying to trying to heat this one up. Uh, that's what I'm saying. My heating element of, of the iron, I think, is on its way out. And unlike others who bought the same iron and got a heating element for it in the box, I was not so lucky. My goodness. My phone is on do not disturb because then I get childish, childish pranks of people sending me silly things. Like, hey, look, I'm on the stream. Will not mention any names. <coughs> the entire Mac Yak crew. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, I got stuck to this little thing, too. This, I hate this solder wick. I really do. It is not... not ideal for what I'm working with here. <laughs> yeah. Do a firmware update on your VCR over the internet. You could dial up. All right, so zoom out a little bit here. Yeah, so these pads could use some more work. Oopsie. Note to self: do not put soldering iron and touch the rubber things of the of the microscope. No harm, no done. Okay. <laughs> My own theme park. <laughs> ah, good old Futurama. Alright, so let's, um, what was I going to do here? Oh, that, the damn wick. I hate that wick. I don't like it. And I dropped my flux into the trash bin. That's not good. I'm running out, but I don't, I don't want to trash it. So let me try just cutting the end of this here, because I think the less, the less of, uh, The less of the wick I have, the little easier it will be to, uh, to manage. Okay, so we're just going to continue along here.
Fine. Some of those dark spots, that's just a, not here, but the other areas, are just a difference between maybe the height of some of the old solder and there were some scratches and stuff. So uh, that probably needs to be scraped away with a scalpel. But the rest didn't look too bad. rid of all that old gunk there. Okay. Hope everyone's still doing good tonight. You probably spend most of your time here. And I appreciate that. It's a little bit better to me. This trace is going to be fun. Look at that. I'm not even going to address that. This is gonna look so much better after a clean, I could I could tell you right now. Alright. In fact, let me go warm up the ultrasonic cleaner. Because um we'll probably want to get this board clean before I do any other work on it. Because of some of the, the disgusting crud that is all over this. So this might this might be a double cleaner and a double cleaner, double header. See, I get words stuck in my head, which is usually a sign of it's time for me to start wrapping it up when I'm not making sense anymore. Unless you don't mind, I'll just keep going, making a fool out of myself. <laughs> Since when have I stopped before? Yeah, because there are just some lovely spots at this board. 
little solder balls and junk and Ugh, yeah, especially this area I mean, I could scrub that all I want. None of that stuff is going to come off easily, so. <laughs> Thank you, Trina. So, 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 such kind and encouraging words. X. All right, so. Let's see how many caps you got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, this one doesn't require a lot of caps, but let me uh, pull up the guide here. Classic 2. Two, Maganesh two, SE thirty, color classic. How do I not have a regular classic here? Unless I printed it and it's just not here. Yeah, that could be the case. So we are going to go to one of my favorite websites, and that is, oops. <laughs> Wrong one, but subscribe to them anyway. The Retro Mac Cast, they're awesome guys. <laughs> Alright, let's try and fix that. There we go. Brankus Creations, RecapMac.com. We're going to go there and get our uh, get our stuff in place. I have no room right now for a filing cabinet, even if it's a very cool Commodore 64 one. Alright, we're going to go to the website. Go to Macintosh Classic. Okay, and so we need all 47s and 150. Perfect, I have those. Excellent. And the 150 is a small one that was right there. Okay. So I'm actually going to, you know, th this board isn't too dirty. So I think what I'm going to do, oopsie, again, left that banner up. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is, I'm, because it's, that's the only problem here. I would I would just put the caps on now, but there are some traces. All right. Well, there's only there's only a few that need some ultrasonic. Uh, there's only some that need uh, some solder mask over them. So let's let's try. Let's we're gonna we're gonna put the caps on. But let's uh, let's put on. Uh, let's protect some of those traces that we have to. Uh, where the caps will be going right under something so we don't run into any potential shorts or issues. And let me change this so I don't make that mistake again. Ha! Okay. And uh, we will, we will uh, try. Okay, so. Back over here. Get some more uh, alcohol on the board here. And for the 43 people still watching, thank you very much. Even if you have me on in the background, you're doing your chores, you're cooking dinner, you're cleaning up. Thank you for spending time with me. Otherwise, I'd just be sitting here talking to myself and it'd be a very different type of a stream, I think. This is going to have little trace repairs all over it, unfortunately. This is more trace repairs than I would have expected with this job, but uh, we will, we will uh, see if we could just get away with some quick fixes here. Okay. Uh, 
that's not making much of a difference at all. There we go. That should be better. Thank you. Thank you very much for stopping by. Um, we are still repairing quite a few things. There are a lot of little traces here that I would like to pay some attention to in order for them to not really cause any surprises after all the capacitors and such are on. Um, this one is the only real annoying one here, hopefully, uh, that well, we could just... All right, so the, the ones I'm really concerned about is, is these two here. Uh, this one and this one. And this one. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six traces. Lovely. Um, hopefully what I'll just be able to do is use the soldering iron here and just put some fresh solder on those traces and then just cover them with UV solder mask. That should hopefully fix some of these up here. More flux. We need more flux, Captain. And yes, hello, Jake. Thank you for joining the stream. I don't know if you're here before, but thank you for joining. My tools are right in front of me, and I lose them. How about that? How does that work? hate this solder wick. Not cooperating with me today at all. It is too wide. I have no idea where the other wick went. Okay. That should be alright for now, hopefully. Well, thank you very much for stopping by. Hope your game is going well. So before we put down any UV solder mask, we have to make sure everything is nice and clean. And it looks like that pad over there kind of got a little bit pulled up. There we go. Now what? Any funny business happening here?
Uh, to me, that doesn't look clean. I don't know why that's not looking clean. I mean, I'm using alcohol here. It's just very streaky when I'm drying it. I don't know. Just the amount of dirt on the area of the board, or... Well, I guess that's as clean as we're going to get it. Alright, so we have some UV solder mask here. Which is always fun to get everywhere. I will try my best to paint very delicately with it. Use a paper clip here. The idea is not to cover the board in it, but just to just cover these little spots like this that could potentially touch something that we don't want it to touch. And I'm just doing the ones closest to where the capacitors are right now. Um, just because there'll be a pain to do afterwards. Because the capacitor will be covering it, so. Definitely want to cover that, because that should not be touching whatever's there, and this as well. Now it's okay if I need to test these points afterwards, because this could just be scraped away. This is not permanent or anything like that. It's the same material that is of the green stuff that you see on the other parts of the board. So if for some reason uh, this board does not power up or doesn't work as we expected, I can always scrape it away. But it's protecting it uh, from continuity of those other pins there. It's just making sure that nothing that we don't want touching is not going to touch and so on and so forth. Twenty minutes until launch. Launch or lunch? I know you don't really have to put the UV solder mask down when you already coated it with solder, but in this area just want to be sure. Okay, so everything over here looks okay. Now we get out a little laser. Ah, eating dinner. Okay, nice. Now I'm hungry again. I'm going to turn the lights down low. And use our little laser here to harden or cure. Oop, and I got this solder stuff all over the chair. Fantastic. And my fingers. No, not going to pull a Bruce and pointing at the camera. I'm not going to buy a camera just because of my own stupidity. You could do that, Greg. Why don't you go buy a laser and point it at some brand new cameras that you have? Some of these areas should cure real quick because they're very tiny. Others will take a little bit more time. Oh, thanks, Matt. Now that's stuck in my head, too.
this one's going to take a while. Wish I had a little thing that would hold this so I didn't have to hold it. <laughs> Gulping at a snack or something. Zoom out a little bit. I keep dropping this little cap thing. I'll leave you over there. See now I got now I got the goo on me. It's on my hand. I have a paper towel around here somewhere. Ugh. Okay, let's continue. It booted! Nice. So, sorry, this is kind of the boring part here, but you have any questions about older computers or Macs or... I don't know. Fluffy bunny rabbits, you... <laughs> let me know. You can... We'll chat a little bit. All 44 of you who are still watching, my goodness. I have no knowledge of a Sun Spark station. I've looked at them before. They look pretty. I have no idea about anything else. Sorry, Mike. And you know I don't. That's why you're being a jerk. <laughs> Wise ass. <laughs> I put tape over this so I wouldn't have to hold down the button because it, it does actually get a little repetitive, believe it or not. There we go. Yeah, why don't you come... No, come in the peak of the snowstorm, GT. I'll give you bad directions. You'll get stuck in the snow. And uh, you'll have a great time. I have a T-Bond or Bonter. It's some no-name garbage one. Uh, and I say it's garbage because it literally came to me broken. It did not work, and I had to open up and fix it. And, yeah, I mean, I got a cheap one off eBay. That's what you that's what you, you get what you pay for. Um, but I took the risk. I knew it was probably going to be that, uh, that kind of a quality type thing. But it wasn't anything I couldn't fix. It was... There was metal touching where it shouldn't be, and wires weren't really soldered in correctly. So, uh, but it was under a hundred and fifty dollars. So it uh, again, I get what I guess I get what I paid for. But hopefully, it lasts longer than Bruce's one because <laughs> uh, I mean Bruce made his own, which is quite a spectacular feat in its own. Uh, and my hat off, my hat goes off to him for actually doing that because that's amazing. But hopefully uh, mine doesn't have as many problems as his is, because obviously he's using different parts, and a lot of it was experimentation and stuff like that, so he was running into some issues. But hopefully those get all resolved. Yes, and I wouldn't stop the stream and be like, Nope, sorry, you gotta come back another time. You didn't schedule an appointment. should be done right 
Yep. Okay. Anywhere else? Well, over here. This is going to take a little bit. Nothing too exciting. We painted some UV solder mask on some areas that our new capacitors will go on. So that is what we're doing right now. We're just curing it, making sure all of that dries. And then we're going to be putting new caps on and see if this thing works. How about that? So probably another half hour of uh, exciting streaming madness. So what happens when I try and do two things at once. I lose my focus there. There we go. And again, I know you don't really have to put the solder mask on areas where, you know, it's not going to be touching or anything like that. But I just want to make sure that we're all okay there. Oh, but still needs more time. Yeah, that should just need a little bit more until it's no longer as flexing. And I should probably stop poking it, but it's fun. Need to hold my hand steadier. Come on. Oh boy. Yeah, this one had uh, some interesting capacitors on it. If those of you watching two hours ago likely saw some of them go pop. It was exciting, wasn't it? So, hopefully, this machine is not beyond repair. It doesn't look too bad overall. I mean, there's some gunk between some of the chips there, which is a little concerning. But. I am hopeful that we can see some life out of this board once again. What do you guys think? So we should almost be done here. Oh, well, thank you, Trina. That is very kind of you. Let's dim this down further so I can better see exactly where the light is. Oh yeah, all that good uh, component goodness that they shove in there, like the powdery, uh, not the powdery, the white glue type stuff in the power supplies. That's always fun, isn't it? Oops. That one was not cured yet, and I poked it. So let's wait for that one to cure. Well, 
Well, the good thing with the pot of power supply is you just replant it and then it works fine. But then, thank you, thank you. I'll be here tomorrow. Okay, I think that's good. All right, now we will have to do some other similar work on the other pads, but let's, oh, that happens when you stay in the same spot for too long. Uh, let's try and get some of the capacitors onto the board so at least we feel like we're making some progress today. How about that? Okay, now where is my trusty bag of capacitors? These are the 50 volt ones. I need one of those. I should have a much larger bag of the uh, 47 microfarad 16 volt capacitors. Ones are the small ones. Yeah, it's the small ones. That's fine. All right, good. We are all set. All right, so we're going to be uh, putting some flux. Four capacitors here. Get uh, my scissor here and cut the rest of this packaging off. Goes in the trash. Hello, Vandalay. Um, <laughs> awesome username, by the way. Vandalay Industries! Say Vandalay! Say Vandalay! Um, I can almost guarantee you... Well, I can guarantee you at one point. But I can almost guarantee you now that that machine is likely having uh, some leakage inside of the machine. So unfortunately, due to the age and those specific models, those LC Performa 500 series models, um, they are very well known to have issues of leaking capacitors. Just how it is. Um, the machine could work perfectly fine, but you will find eventually that those capacitors will leak and they can be very corrosive, or they are very corrosive rather, and they will damage the logic board. Uh, so what I would highly suggest is you remove the battery that is on that board, make sure the battery um, is a new one, and then I would also suggest, uh, since those boards are easily removable, very carefully... And again, the, these, these, the plastics are brittle on those types of machines. Very carefully remove the back of the board and take a look at it. If you notice any dust or stickiness around the capacitors, they may have already started to leak. Um, but I would highly suggest you, you get that recapped, whether from me or somebody else, if you want to do it yourself. Um, but all of these 68K Macintoshes, uh, unless they already have tantalum capacitors on them, uh, will need recapping. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. So you may be able to, uh, you know, get a few more months out of it or years out of it without needing a recap. But uh, unfortunately, sooner or later, all of these machines will require that type of attention. So I hope that answers your question. Feel free to ask a follow-up if you have any other questions. And welcome to the Vintage Macintosh community. So we're just putting some new capacitors on here. The 
<laughs> Don't lose the fizz there. <laughs> Get those batteries out. Especially if it's a Maxell branded battery. It's a little bit of a Macintosh humor there. Because they are so notoriously bad. Sure, yeah, go to mac84.net slash services or slash web slash services, whatever the URL is. Uh, but find my Instagram, Twitter, my website. Feel free to send me uh, a message there. Uh, I could at least give you an idea of how much it would cost. Um, but that's a great machine. You do not want to see that uh, fail. Um, but it's a good sign that it's working. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's going to be perfect. I've had uh, machines that looked fine, you know, when they were running. And uh, unfortunately they were already leaking inside and it was pretty messy but uh, hopefully that is not the case I always try to be optimistic but you never know until you get you know the machine under a microscope etc so okay ah very nice that's exitive that would be excellent Jay good you did take the battery out excellent alright so we're just doing a wiggle test just nudging the sides of these capacitors, making sure they're not going anywhere. And they aren't. Excellent. Okay, so we have four more capacitors to put on here. Let's see how much work this is going to be for us. So, yeah, we got some UV solder mask we got to put all over that one. That's going to be fun. And we got to do the same over here. Isn't this a fun party? Well, let's just get right into it, huh? Yeah, the 580 is, uh, the boards of the 580 are, are sought after because you could put them in a Macintosh Color Classic and just make that a, a beast of a machine. Make it a Mystic, Mystic upgraded Color Classic, you know. So I'm just cleaning up this area as best I can so I can put some of that UV solder mask on this trace in the middle here. I wonder if that's actually making a connection. Well, our friend the multimeter will be able to tell us that, won't you? That's a break. So even though this looks fairly like, you know, just some dirt on there or something like that, that's a break right there. So if I put the leads together, it makes a beeping noise. No matter what metal I touch here, not making a connection there. So that's bad. We're going to fix that. Make sure that this one doesn't have a similar problem. Where does that trace go? That trace goes under here, goes to here. Alright, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. And just for funsies. Hitting the microscope, like ugh. Excellent. Okay. Ooh, that stinks about the shipping on that one. Don't you love it when that happens? Oh, and I just dropped the cap for the UV solder mask in the trash again. Let's not, let's not do that. Okay, all right, it's time to uh, fix that bad trace here, so. Uh, this is such a small gap there, I could probably just do it with solder, but I don't want to do that. I want to make sure there's a permanent connection there between that capacitor uh, and this line here. 
And to do that, it's going to require a bit more work. And that might be another break there, or maybe not. This board, unfortunately, does seem to be in pretty rough shape. Yep, and there's that trace. So, yeah, that's just going to chip off there. But that's okay. We got some wire here. We're going to fix the trace. And that's what we're going to do. That wire might be a little too thick. Yeah, maybe. Let's see. Where's the other spool of wire I had around here? Here we go. Yeah, that's more like it. Okay, we could we could do that. That's fine. All right, so I'm just going to get the uh, insulation burned off the edge of that wire there. Actually, we'll just do this little strip of it there because. That's what we'll need for this. Okay. We'll need our good tweezers for this. I keep dropping every tool off my desk today. Oh, fun, 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 fun. Okay, so let's see if we could make quick work of this trace repair. Oh yeah, these are the tweezers I was missing. clean that up more but we're off to a good start no Jay we've got some broken traces Okay, and this pad right here is a pain in the butt already, so we're going to have to be careful about that. Okay, so let me put down the UV solder mask there, then I'll put down the new capacitor. get like the smallest bit of hair or fur or whatever on the edge of my paperclip here as I'm painting with this stuff. It drives me bonkers. should really get a little paintbrush but don't have one at the moment here so be able to clean that up also
And actually, it wouldn't be a bad idea for me to put some mask here just to hold that down a little bit. I don't know how sound that logic is, but... sort of acts as a, as a glue, so it would not hurt, I don't think, to just try and persuade that pad just to stay down just a little bit for us there. Because that's a wiggly pad. We don't, we don't like wiggly pads. Where's our little laser here we go dim the lights so I can better see where the heck I'm pointing this thing I am very bad at holding things still So we've been going for almost three hours here, my goodness. But just goes to show, you never know what uh, condition the board's going to be in until you send it in. So I like to get a look at it. Um, I knew this one would be pretty uh, dirty based on uh, Hunter's description there. But you always think, oh, maybe it's not as bad. <laughs> and then you got other boards that look fine, but they have other problems, so. It is so weird looking at that wall over there and not seeing any of the junk that was on the wall or that sink. I'm very, very happy to get that out of there. That was a project in itself, getting that sink out of there. My goodness, that cast iron sink weighed a bunch. Happy to have that out, <laughs> out of the house. Whew. So, yeah, the only problem with putting the shelves up is I have to move all the stuff that's on that existing shelf there with all the MacBooks and the iMac and everything. So I have to take everything off of that. I have to find a spot for all that stuff to sit temporarily. And then I have to move some stuff around. But uh, I will get there slowly, I'm sure. Uh, the other problem is there's a pipe in the wall. It's just a drainage pipe, so there's no water in it. But uh, it sticks out a little too far for my liking, so I may have to cut that a little bit. But I don't have the right tool to do that, so... Oh, good luck, Solar Strike. I wish you the best move. I wish that you don't lose anything. And I wish everything goes smoothly. Because that's a stressful time. That's not fun. And uh, it may seem silly to say, but label every box and be detailed. Because, my goodness, I thought I was detailed when I moved in, moved five years ago. And it came to a point I was just we were in such a rush... I was just shoving things in boxes. I still don't know where some stuff is. <laughs> I'm still looking for my wife's Nintendo DS. I have no idea where it is. Absolutely no idea. It's somewhere. I remember putting it in the car. I have no idea where it is. Oh, my finger's getting tired of holding that button down. Good, 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 good. You're off to a great start. Let's see, is that solid yet? Mm, almost. have a handsaw Nick the problem is it's a very thick pipe and my handsaw is not doing any justice to cutting into that so it's gonna be fun I do have a little uh, handsaw but I don't know if it's gonna be it's, it's a very it's right next to the wall it's very awkward I don't know if it's gonna help me by uh, trying to cut it we shall see we shall see of course you're back we've been talking about you 
<laughs> I don't think she had Nintendogs. I think I, I was the only one. My goodness, my Nintendogs. What have happened to them? They're still sitting on that cartridge. I'm very glad you got that TV mounted. Mike, it looks very nice. I'm sure we'll see it on tomorrow's stream. Still, I mean, the, 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 the amount of mask I put on there does not help, but it still needs a little bit more time. Oh my goodness. Well, the lower the resolution, the better I look is, is what I hear. What Mac Pro, uh, MacBook Pro do you have there? Curious the year of it. I'm turning this fan off because my hands are getting cold. 2009, okay. This shouldn't be too bad, but... Uh, maybe the batteries on this laser need replacing. That may also be something I have to look into. I know Bruce uh, hardwired his. That was a very smart idea. He hardwired his so he doesn't have to worry about batteries. Probably something I should consider doing. Ah, uh, other stuff going on. Okay. Hello, Bob. I think uh, you're new to the stream. Hello. Welcome. Let's I think that's as hard as that's going to get there. So, more of an LC man yourself. Well, the LCs are fine machines as long as they don't have those yucky batteries in there and those capacitors have been fixed. All right, so let's put this capacitor on here. And so that is just a standard 47 microfarad capacitor, 16 volts of the finest volts. I know that's out of focus here. Let's uh, adjust that. There we go. Okay. We have our good tweezers here. This is going to be a bit of an interesting one to put on, so let's hope everything goes to plan here. Especially the angle of this, the button being right there and everything. Some more solder on that side. Okay. All right. Not too bad. This one should be okay. That's the smaller one. That's the uh, 50 microfarads. Let's put one of those on. I am down to one capacitor here, so I definitely need to make, make that order tomorrow. Those lasted me a while though, those really did. And of course it's one of the ones that are just the right size that it could fit on the pad, but you just have to be super careful of your placement of it, because otherwise you can get into some trouble here. Uh, 
Yeah, I did not leave enough room behind the capacitor, so I have to do this again. Probably too much solder, but I'm just happy that it's staying in one place. No worries, right? That was very kind of you. Appreciate it. Alright, these are not going anywhere. Excellent. Alright, so we have two more caps to go, but <laughs> there's some more stuff involved. Yeah, this is not your average recapping. There is more trace repair going on here than uh, normal. But uh, I'm curious to see if uh, we get any life out of this one. As I'm sure a lot of you are curious to see. That's why you're staying up late to see. Because it is past midnight. We're almost at three. that magical three-hour mark where I'm usually wrapping things up sometimes. All right, so we just need some mask there. Uh, I could probably put that one on later on uh, because that is not going to be under a capacitor. So we don't have to worry about that too much, but still, uh, we will want to cover that at some point. That's not too bad. Uh, any, it depends on the footage you're using for video editing. If you're using standard definition, high definition, 4K, I mean, it really depends on the codec too. I mean, you could get by with a Core 2 Duo or an i5, or, or an i3 rather, um, for standard def and some high def stuff depending on the codec but anything a bit more processor intensive you're going to want at least an i5 processor a dual core one or a quad core you made it welcome we are putting some very exciting uv solder mask on this trace that had to be repaired here And then we're going to put a capacitor back on top of it, and then one over there, and then we're going to boot it up. We're going to test it. So within the next 15 minutes or so, we are still going, Bruce. Hope your pipes are okay. And uh, we'll be able to see if this Macintosh Classic can live again. This is very exciting, I know. I don't know, Bruce had some pipe problems. Hope he's okay. Hope they weren't as severe as mine. So much fun, isn't it, Bruce? So much fun. Yeah, and the more memory, the better uh, with those machines, uh, especially really helps with your video editing performance. And obviously when you render something, if you have a graphics card that supports Final Cut Pro or whatever software you're using, uh, sometimes you get away with rendering things faster, which is nice.
Right, let's see if that is cured. Eh, not quite. Still a little a little jelly there. Turn the lights down so it's easier to see exactly where that light is shining. Okay, let's see if that made a difference. Okay, I think we're good to go there. All right, so we are going to put our final two capacitors on this board here. Let me just double check. All right, there we go. So we need two more of these. Okay, yeah, that pad was giving us problems before because that's to the ground and it was just not heating up enough as we wanted, but that should be able to just do for now as we test this thing, see if we get any life out of it. Okay, and straighten that out. Car just went by outside that sounded like the little Jetsons mobile. It was like Hey, that should be good. Let's just. It's not going anywhere. Either is that one. Here's that one. Okay, I think we're about ready to test this. Oof. I've been sitting in the same position for way too long now. Let me just get up and do a little stretch. Oh boy. Yeah, that was. Uh, that was well needed. Okay. Alright, so let's. Just take a look over here, just clean up some of this flux and junk. And obviously we do have some more UV solder mask that we have to put in places. And we do have to clean up some of the junk like this area up and this. No, that's not a, that's not, I keep thinking this is a trace, but it's it's just that whole well technically. Well it's this whole thing that's going on there. Sorry, right, just just clean this up. OK, 
okay and do a little bit over here as well uh, I'm especially concerned about that little area so I'm gonna just scrub that a little bit just like the one chip that just had a little bit too much stuff flaking around from it from to my liking and I could dry that with my little machines let me uh, let me mute you all That did not get under as much as I hoped it would, but all right. Well, at least at least that's uh, as clean as we could get it right now. I don't see any of these pins touching each other. Hopefully, there's no gunk buildup under them or anything like that. I'll just use my multimeter real quick. That pin's not touching at all. Excellent. That one's not touching either. Alright, so we do have a minor cleanup here, unfortunately. Fun never stops. Fun never stops. So it's lovely that there's so much dirt and grime in that area that the solder is just not sticking where it's supposed to. And the result of that is sometimes you get a bunch of little solder balls, which we are seeing a few of now. You see they start to pop up. Yes, this is the chip that was being a little bit of an annoying problem to us before. So it doesn't surprise me that not everything is touching here. We just want to... I just want to clean it off enough so hopefully we can get a connection here. We could test our board. I'm not looking for it to be perfect right now, but... I am just very eager to test this. Uh, 
three hours later. Oh yeah, that that this chip is not really on here good. <sighs> We're gonna have to take it off, I think. We're gonna have to take this off because it is, it is not. Uh, I don't think it's gonna sit there quietly for us. I'm gonna try putting it back on one more time, but I have my doubts. There we go. Let's get some solder to stick there. Come on. There we go. Well, yeah, let's hope we don't need the big hammer. Yeah, see, sometimes you think, oh, the capacitors are good, but what's around the capacitors? Exactly. All that stuff could also be problematic. Yeah, so all this crud and junk that is there, that's all the old dirt and solder and junk that we just do not want on our board there. Okay, so I think that's most of the gunk out of there. So let's test again to see if we're getting a connection from the pins to the pads. Uh, that's what I'm most concerned about because I'm not sure that we are in some cases. Just repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. It's important, whatever it is, and uh, if they put it on the logic board. My assumption is that it's kind of needed, so. Lovely. Yuck.
See, it's not it's not flat enough for me to get the whole blade in there. Just clean this up the best I can right now. All right, let's test continuity here. See if it's going how it's supposed to. Uh, still, you Sears. Well, let's make sure there's not gunk on there. All right, good. Fix that. Fix that. Fix that. Fix that. Sorry, you can't see this because I'm so zoomed in here. Okay, okay, okay. Mm. Yeah, this is this one is not making the connection to the pad there so we still have a little work to do on that one but everything else is good oh it will it just it takes so much time because i'm i'm had to put some on a little q-tip then it gets dirty again then we have to, so that's what we've been just so we've been repeating this process just going back and forth back and forth but it's not it's I think there's what the problem is there is some dirt and grime and gunk under this pin here so it's not connecting to the solder or to the pad rather yeah see this is all gunk that's under that pin so we're trying to clear that out enough so it will make a nice fresh connection Try it again. Come on. You want to touch it. You want to connect. There we go. That's all we need is just a little bit. All right, so let's double check everything again. Really? Yay! Okay, that's good. Excellent. All right, we should be good to go. Oh boy, see, just the tiniest little things has caused such big problems. Make sure we got all that alcohol off this area. We don't want anything wet. Hello, hello. Welcome to the chat. Welcome to the stream. We are about to test this Macintosh Classic to see if our three hours and 13 minutes of poking away at here have helped. We have a little bit of a solder ball there. Let me get rid of that. Thank you. Okay. Alright, I'm just going to check my work here with my eyes. Uh, positive, 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 positive. Positive, 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 positive. All right, everything looks good. I'm going to need to take the ROM from my Macintosh Classic board. Uh, I do not know if Hunter's still around. If he is, he has a lot of patience. Um, but if he is not, no worries. I will reach out to him with the results. 
Hello, Drake. Welcome to the chat. So I'm just taking the ROM off of my Macintosh Classic here. Now the ROM does have a spot where it could sort of go a different way, and you just want to make sure you do not put it in that way, because that's the wrong way. He's still here! Look at that! That is dedication, sir. That is dedication. Alright, so we're going to put that, that ROM in. Sound like I said ramen like the noodle, but I mean ramen in. Okay. And I'm just, I didn't even look at the underside of the board. Just want to make sure all the caps that I have are installed on their board as well. No, it's not seeing any big gaps. I mean, there's, there's some gaps where there are no capacitors, but that is how the board was shipped. Everything looks okay to my eyes. There we go. Okay. Yeah, it's actually um, what is it? Forty-one pins, and there's there's two extra pins. So yeah, yeah, forty. Yep, yeah, you got it. Forty-two. Have you ever flashed your own ROMs? No, I have not. No, I have not. Mmm, ramen. Now, see, I'm now I'm hungry again. This is bad. It's like one a.m. and I'm hungry. All right, so let's get all of our tools and everything to the side here, so we can test this board properly. Nope. Oh, sorry for the squeak. Oh boy, that's a squeaky, squeaky, squeaky microscope. Okay. So let's switch the view here so you're not covered in darkness. All right. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's good to sit up and stretch. All right, so I have a Macintosh board here. Well, more like a Macintosh CRT. We have the analog board and all the fancy bits for the Mac here. And then I have an extension cord here that makes it a bit easier to test things out. Okay, just a simple ATX cord, nothing too fancy. Okay, I'm going to plug this guy in here. What do you guys think? Is it going to work? What do you think, Hunter? You've been watching the whole time, very patiently. Uh, let's get a ADB keyboard in here. Where do all my keyboards go? Ah, darn. Um, usually have one sitting around here, but I've been cleaning up, so... I guess we don't need a keyboard already. Right. Let's try and let's try and turn it on and see what happens. So let me get a power cable here. And let's get the camera in a bit closer. A mess of a floor makes that a little bit hard to do, but we're gonna try. It'll live. That's very kind of you. Alright, so let's make sure everything looks okay. Um, Let's get this a bit closer. There we go. All right, so plug this in. And we're gonna turn it on in three, two, one. It chimed, that's a good sign. And we have a cursor on the screen. How about that? Fantastic. All right, so let me get a keyboard and a mouse. We can actually test this thing, but looking good so far. Bong. All right, so let me get a keyboard from over here. I'll be right back. Looking good so far. Not celebrating just yet. <laughs> we 
make sure we don't have any ADB issues or anything like that. All right, whoopsie. All right, so now we have the mouse plugged in and let me get an ADB cable. I'm always having around here and we seem to lose them. Oh, that's a serial cable. Looks, looks similar. Okay, where is, there it is. No, that's not an ADB cable. Where the heck are my ADB cables? Bruce has those capacitor fairies that just steal all of his capacitors. I have cable fairies that steal all the cables. Oh boy. I keep finding mice, but, but no, no, no cable. All right, here's a cable. Finally, found a cable. All right. We definitely are gonna boot off the ROM disc and that's why I need the keyboard. All right, so. Yeah, plug this bad boy in again. Plug it into a, a keyboard here. And hold down Command Option XO, I believe. And that should boot us into the ROM. If my fingers could actually reach like that. Okay, let's try that again. The mouse moves, excellent. That's very good. There we go, welcome to Macintosh. Oh, that is a lovely sight, isn't it? There we go, system 6.1x. <laughs> One full megabyte of memory. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, Hunter, I think I think we have a working Macintosh here. What do you say? Fantastic. Oh, thank you very much, Jay, for the super chat. Eep. <laughs> Greatly appreciated. Obviously, I'll be doing some uh, tests off camera. I have a test suite of software, both software and hardware, that I run on these machines just to make sure the serial ports work and everything else. But I am happy with that. That is a uh, that is a very uh, very satisfying way uh, to have this work out, boy. Yeah, so I, I, I have the floppy port to test, the SCSI port to test, the serial ports to test, the sound ports to test, um, and I do have the card here. He did not include one, but I have the card here for the extra memory. Make sure that works, but we're getting good signs out of this so far, so that's excellent. There is some solder mask I still have to clean up on some of this board, but that is fan-freaking-tastic. That is excellent. I am very satisfied. Um... I uh, didn't know quite what to expect because sometimes the board looks great and it doesn't power on. And this time, everything worked out. So, how about that? I think that's the quickest turnaround, Hunter, because your package literally arrived the other day. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, let me get the, the one that is supposed to be the worst one out of the way. And it seemed to work out okay. So, I'm going to leave my ROM on here for now as I do testing. And I'm going to put a label on that so I know that's my ROM. Otherwise, I will forget... And then I'm going to be like, wait, could you send that ROM back? That was actually mine. I'll put a little sticker on that now before I forget. The sticker's too big to fit. There we go. And we'll just put an S on there for Steve. Yes, Mike, but as we discussed, I need to order capacitors for your laptop. I'm not going to pull them off just to let them sit around with no capacitors. So there we go. A lovely recapped Macintosh Classic board. I am very satisfied with how that came out. So we just need some extra solder mask in a few areas. Uh, I'm going to bring it through the ultrasonic cleaner, make sure no troubles arise 
uh, when we bring it through that, but the board does look pretty clean otherwise. I mean, those capacitors did quite a amount of damage to this thing, so uh, I am pretty happy with the way this came out. Very, very cool. But uh, it is almost 1 a.m. here. I really do hate to leave you guys with 47 of you watching right now. Um, but, uh, yeah, the analog board will be, uh, will be, uh, something to tackle. Um, and I assume you don't want me to send the board back before the analog board is done, because I assume you don't have another classic just sitting around. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have to get to that. But, uh, yeah, I think, I think I'm going to wrap it up here, because we've been going for over three hours, and I'm starting to get a little tired, and it's almost 1 a.m., so I assure, I assume a lot of you guys have other things to do as well. But there's, the holy crap, there's like 45 of you still watching. Um, I do appreciate it. Um, I just don't think I have the energy to open up another board and, and go for it. But uh, I'm glad to end on a high note. So uh, success is always a good place to stop. So I thank everybody for tuning in. Thank you everybody for the super chats, the likes, the shares. Uh, if you are not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribe. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Please consider subscribing to the channel. We have that giveaway tomorrow. Um, last entries now. Go <laughs> if you haven't followed the entry uh, thing for the giveaway, uh, do that now. Uh, I'll I'll ignore the, the the time zone that I'm currently in. But we're doing the the uh, giveaway tomorrow, so I have to pull all the comments soon. But yeah, that's. Uh, that's about it. So thank you guys. Have a great night. Take care. I'm going to find that end stream button and click it awkwardly. And I'll make a goofy face at the end. But <laughs> take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. And I'll catch you next time.